Being 17 has never been easy. No longer feeling like a child, but technically not yet an adult. In most countries, you can't drive, drink alcohol, or vote. But whether it's just hanging out with friends, spending time with family, practicing religion, going to school, going to work, or just having fun. Three, two, one, go! 17 is one of our most formative years. We're following five 17-year-olds in five different countries to see how they spend a typical Saturday. The nightlife is amazing. From Thailand to Uganda. When you tell someone that I have school six days a week, they're like, what? Lebanon to Russia. What's it like being 17? And is it harder to be a teenager now than ever before? For lots of teenagers, Saturdays are a day of rest. No school or work, and a time to catch up on some much needed sleep. But for Ruth, Saturday is just like any other day, and work starts early. She lives in Takaradi, about a five hour drive along the coast from the Ghanaian capital, Accra, with her five month old daughter. Ruth never knew her birth mother growing up and, with nowhere else to go, moved here to live with a family friend when her father passed away three years ago. Around 14 people live with Ruth in this compound in the village and on cooking day, everyone mucks in to prepare, cook and bag the chips ready to be sold. Around 9am, it's time for Ruth to leave. She'll visit three markets a day, hoping to sell enough bags of chips to support both her and her daughter. <laughs> Southeast of Ghana, in the Ugandan capital Kampala, Joy has already been awake for hours. It's Saturday, I'm going to school. I have a math, technical drawing and physics today. Joy leaves for school around 6 a.m and it can take about an hour to commute through the heavy Kampala traffic. When you go through school, it's, uh, uh, you are more likely to succeed in life. Uh, for example, I want to be an architect. Uh, there is no way I'm going to achieve that, except if I do go through school. I do math, physics and uh, technical drawing, and uh, next year I'll be finishing high school, and I hope to go to university and study architecture. Showing clearly. And the way the figure is, it starts from this top, then bulges to this out, outermost hexagon. Technical drawing is the smallest class that Joy has, but there are still over 50 pupils. Let me give you a rough example here. Most people in my family, they are doing uh, arts-related uh, careers, and I'm the only one doing this science-related career. So I, I chose it for myself. Four and a half thousand miles east, there's no lion for Yin either. Yin's the oldest of six and starts her weekend by helping her parents to look after her younger brothers and sisters. เขาพอมีความสําคัญมากเพราะว่าคุณพ่อคุณแม่เนี่ยจะทํางานเกือบทุกวันค่ะจะไม่ค่อยมีเวลาดูแลผู้หนูแล้วก็หนูกับน้อง
วนงานบ้านเนี่ยจะแบ่งกับน้องคนที่สองก็คือมินนะคะหนูท่านที่หนูจะมีซักผ้าล้างจานอะไรประมาณนี้กว่าบ้านถูกบ้านSo among me and my friends, we always talk in English, but like sometimes we mix it with French and Arabic. It's really common to just mix these three languages together. Lebanon is one of the most religiously diverse countries in the Middle East, with large Muslim and Christian populations. I'm a Christian personally, and religion here is a really big part of our lives. And it's not enforced, and it's not as strict as other places. We're serious about it, but it's not like in other cultures when you have to give your life to your religion. I have friends in Dubai that can't even go out with guys, but I can tell you that more than 50% of my friends are all guys. It's just really open-minded. I like it here. Though. Everyone thinks it's dangerous, but to be honest. I'd feel more comfortable personally walking in the streets at night here than in any other country. So why do Tiffany and her mates think Lebanon gets a hard time? Civil war between 1975 and 1990 defined the country for a whole generation, and further violence in 2006 means that for many it still has a reputation as a troubled nation. I always wanted not my children not to go through this, but it seems we're never going to find peace in this region. But it's how close to Syria and Israel it is that many people find worrying now. In truth, Lebanon has been largely peaceful for over a decade, and the capital Beirut is trying to claim back its reputation as the Paris of the Middle East. With the warm Mediterranean Sea all the way down the coast and a bustling nightlife, many visitors see it as a perfect mix of cultures. It hasn't been completely without trouble, though. The murder of British embassy worker Rebecca Dykes in 2017 made many foreigners in the country feel uneasy, and there are some areas, particularly along the border with Syria, where the British Foreign Office advised against all travel. One, two. I think that people that never came to visit Lebanon has a really bad idea about it because of what they watch in the news. But when people come here, their whole idea changes. No! I thought I said, I thought I'd make you fall. It's late morning, and the last 17-year-old to be up and about is Katya in Moscow. I go to meet my friends from Pitera, who will be playing at my concert today. Katya has organised a gig for this evening, and her friends are the headline act. Maybe we will go out and play. If you have the power, we will go out and play. Of course. The power. The band have travelled on the overnight train from St. Petersburg and are keen to see some of the Moscow sights. То есть выглядит модненько, стильненько, все любят туда ездить, фотографироваться. Вот. Поэтому, наверное, ребята тоже хотят поехать пофотографироваться. Мы едем в квартиру к моему знакомому, чтобы ребята зашли помыться, скинуть вещи, отдохнуть после поезда. Добрые, приветливые, как показывает практика. Но сейчас идет огромная волна пропаганды какой-то, и многие люди военной закалки и старое поколение, то есть тут как мои там отец, бабушка с дедом, они просто уверены в какой-то там агрессии со всех сторон и что вот все обижают русских, что там. Russia is the largest country on earth, home to 142 million people, and it's had a turbulent relationship with the West for a long time. For seven decades, it was a communist country, and Russians had very little contact with people outside. Communism ended in 1991, 
but adapting to a capitalist society hasn't been an easy transition. Still now, fewer than a third of Russians have a foreign passport, and you don't have to look far to find negative stories about Russia in the world's media. More is now known about the substance involved in the suspected poisoning of a former Russian spy and his daughter. Vladimir Putin has been the political face of Russia, either as the president or prime minister, for nearly 20 years. And that means for teenagers like Katya, he's the only leader they've ever known. Catcher's day may only just be starting, but for Joy, halfway through the school day, it's break time. I have school six days a week. So I would love to do other things on Saturdays, of course because uh, you, you'd love to have that break, but uh, now the only break I have is Sunday, and Sunday is also a busy day. Sunday is, is a church day, like, uh, if I could have a Saturday to myself, or hang out, uh, yeah, that, that would be good. So uh, I've gotten used to it, and it's, it's not so bad, though. Sorry. By mid-afternoon, all across the world, it's lunchtime. And whether that's some fast food at the beach in Lebanon, a Burger King in Moscow, street food in Bangkok, or a school lunch in Kampala, everyone's tucking into something to eat. Well, almost everyone. For Ruth, she's still out selling. Sadly, at the moment, the chips aren't selling very well either. Her daughter stays at home with her adoptive mother whilst Ruth is working. Twenty cedis is just under three pounds, or around three dollars eighty. It means Ruth is earning more than the official absolute poverty line of one dollar ninety a day set by the World Bank. But she is still very poor. Around a quarter of the people in Ghana live below the national poverty line. But Ghana is considered to be one of the more stable countries in West Africa and was the first black African colony to declare independence in 1957. It's also a young country. Of the 25 million people living here, 57% are under 25. English is the official language, but other African languages like Twi, Akan, and the language that Ruth and her family speak, Fanti, are all common. Eventually for Ruth, business starts to pick up. But despite a few sales, her takings today are still low. Ruth is no longer with her daughter's father. She says that he's never seen his daughter, and in her community, it's not uncommon for people to have a child outside of marriage to suffer stigma. <laughs> Three, two, one, As the sun sets, Tiffany and her mates move to a restaurant overlooking the sea. For dinner we had tabbouleh, hummus and fatouche. That's usually the Lebanese starters. And then we got Lebanese and fish. It was a mix of both. In the Middle East, we're definitely the most open-minded. I can 
say that confidently. I've met people said, on the news and stuff how they show our country is they, they, not how it is, mm. if you want. On the they news? They show it violent. We're not violent at all. And conversation soon moves on to how Lebanon compares with other countries. The foundation of everything is family here. Like that's what that's very what true. that's what they focus on. Here, people they're still 25, they're still living with their mom and dad. And it's not a problem. And right? the, and they get married and the the wife would usually still live there until they get a house. Personally, I had a talk with one of my friends recently about for the future when we get married and when we have kids, would we like like to live somewhere else or in the country. I pick in the country because we're used to how we like we were raised here, we know how the things work. I just think that it's just the best here. You can do everything. You can be having lunch in nature, then going and partying in Beirut at night. Like you can do everything and everything's easy and it's fun. Small town. Yeah. We're very Western, I would say. We're open minded. I've met people from like other countries and they'd say, Oh, you know Drake in Lebanon or like you listen to music in Lebanon and stuff. They think like we ride yeah. cameras and yeah. stuff. When I moved here they told me, Are you gonna have internet and light? <laughs> like, or you're gonna live in tents and stuff. They thought it was crazy. I moved from Australia. They couldn't believe it. It was so weird. As night falls eight and a half thousand miles away in Bangkok, Yin is also spending Saturday night with her friends. Up in my knee. Up in my knee. หนูก็เสิร์ชหาในยูทูบไปเรื่อยๆแล้วแบบบังเอิญไปเจอเมื่อกี้อุ้ยเอามาหมุนดูเอาเอาเอาหนูคิดว่าอ่ากรุงเท
Since its independence from Britain in 1962, Uganda has endured a military coup, a brutal military dictatorship, and a five-year war that saw the current president, Yoweri Museveni, take power in 1986. It means for many Ugandans, including Joy, he's the only leader they've ever known. Often called the Pearl of Africa, around 1.3 million tourists visit Uganda each year, many coming to see the wildlife and go on safari. In recent years, the country has been praised for its campaign against HIV and AIDS, but it's also received a lot of negative international press for taking a hardening stance against the LGBT community. Nearly 4,000 miles away, music is very important to capture too. Slightly different genre though. Наше поколение, оно какое-то пропащее, что ли. Ну, то есть я вижу много своих ровесников, которым вообще ничего не надо и не интересно. Им интересно только тусоваться, только вот жить в кайф, как это говорит. Красиво. Ну, вот, наверное, это говорят про каждое поколение. As Catch's gig carries on into the night, all over the world, Saturday night is well underway. Even though she's already allowed to ride a motorbike, Yin is hoping that her dad will allow her to get a car license when she turns 18. An ambition Joy shares. Once I'm 18, I'll be able to drive, well, legal. In Ghana, Ruth is hoping that she'll soon be able to carry on with her education. Mom, as the night sets in, for most, Saturday is almost over, but in Lebanon, the night is still young. Usually here in Lebanon, the nightlife is amazing, so we won't even get back home before two or three in the morning. So this is how we wrap our day. We all just come here, take some drinks, chill, down, relaxed by the beach. It's amazing. The vibe, the people, the music, it's all really good. Five teenagers, all on the brink of becoming adults, all from different places, all leading very different lives. But when it comes to priorities, teenagers around the world maybe aren't as different as it first appears. I'd like to go and study abroad, uh, maybe visit other countries, uh, but then eventually I would come back here, I would come back and stay in Uganda. Ну, сейчас я надеюсь подтянуть экзамены, занания свои, поступить в следующем году и учиться, учиться. My plan, and I'm pretty sure that most of my friends' plans, is going to college. Here in Lebanon, it's not common for us not to go to college. The most important thing to do is to study. 